Oh, hey! Didn't see you there. What, this whole mic setup thing? Don't worry about it. Things are gonna get pretty, uh, weird. So, stick around if you want to be surprised. Like, wow, I'm a cactus now. I bet you didn't see that coming. <laughs> no, I bet not, you loser. Okay. So just the other day, the Washington Post published an article posing a pretty tough question for itself right there in the headline. Republican voters are deeply divided over Trump, so why do most Republican lawmakers still support him? Well, don't worry about reading this article. It completely fails to answer that question. Welcome to a new thing I'm trying out. Welcome to News Review. Wow. Hey, hey! Welcome to News Review on the Misinformation YouTube channel, the series where I review the news for not being good enough. I'm your host, the fly that landed on Mike Pence's head that one time. Where is it? There it is! There it is. <laughs> Hanging out. Last week, the Post revealed the results of a massive survey they had been conducting nationwide for about 40 days. Receiving 20,000 responses, the survey sought to answer two main questions. One, if you're a Republican, do you believe that Trump or Biden won the election? Two, if you think Trump actually won, do you support Republican politicians who reject the former president? The conclusion of this study, or at least the conclusion that the Post has decided to make, is that the Trump really won Republicans reward Republican candidates who agree with them more than Biden won Republicans will punish the candidates who disagree. Wow. To put it differently, Republican voters who continue to believe that Biden stole the election appear to punish Republican candidates who say otherwise. And then the article goes on to say that Republican politicians who are from pro-Trump districts may be committing political suicide if they don't support Trump. There is a big problem with the author's conclusion here. The claim that Republican politicians may have to support Trump in order to get re-elected in pro-Trump districts assumes two big things, and both of those are false. The first assumption is that voters can't change their minds, which is ludicrous. I mean, after all, life is change. The evidence for this is overwhelming. For starters, I bet you don't look like you did on the day you were born now, do you? And that's cause, you know, changes. And then there's the second assumption that this article makes, which is that politicians play no role in promoting certain viewpoints or changing the viewpoints of voters. This is also wrong. But let's tackle the first assumption first. That voters are incapable of changing their minds. This is patently false even on the surface level. If you're a citizen of the United States, then you may have noticed that your elected governments tend to swap which party has control all the time at every level. Many people who voted for President Obama twice voted for President Trump twice. Voters are in fact capable of changing their minds and their votes. Wow. But this reality, the reality where people actually have brains capable of critical thinking, does not exist in a vacuum. As voters, consumers, and citizens, our brains are constantly being bombarded with propaganda. This could be to buy a product or to vote for a candidate. And all propaganda has the same basic goal. It is trying to get you to believe something, want something, or both. And with that perfect chef's kiss segue, let's tackle the second assumption the Washington Post makes in this article. That politicians played no role in promoting or changing viewpoints for a voter. They blew up the coal mine and then put me in prison. Now they're running ads that say the coal mine blew up and I went to prison. There's no surprise there. But if you want jobs... Every politician that has campaigned for office or holds a public office has affected how their voters think. That is the whole point of campaigning. Virtually no one in the U.S. thought that national elections could be rigged until a well-known reality show host turned presidential candidate started saying so. And It turns out if you run an advertising campaign for six months to two years, it will significantly affect how people think and how they vote. But even though this should be obvious to everyone, including writers at the Washington Post, 
you don't have to take my word for it. In a study conducted by the Harvard Business Review, researchers had almost 200 college students interact with the webs and online advertisements. They created some fake ads and then told participants that the ad they were viewing was targeted or non-targeted. People who were told the ad was targeted were led to believe this was based on their recent web history. Weirdly, the belief that the ad was targeted increased participants' desire to buy the product. But why would believing that an ad is targeted increase your interest in the ad? To find that out, they conducted another study where participants were shown an advertisement for a high-end brand. Some folks were told that the ad was targeted, and others believed it to be random. Then researchers asked participants to rate how sophisticated they perceived themselves to be. What they found is unsettling. Participants who thought the ad was targeted rated themselves highly on the sophistication scale, but those who thought the ad was random rated themselves lower. So when participants thought the ad was targeted, they perceived that the ad was a reflection of them. So just thinking that an ad was targeted increased their interest in the product and even affected how they perceived themselves. The takeaway here is that targeted advertising can have a huge effect on the way people think about the world, and yes, this includes the digital targeted ads used by the Trump campaign, or any politician for that matter. So the Washington Post's assumption that Republican politicians have to pander to Trumpist voters is three Pinocchios? It's their fact check rating system. I don't know, looking at you, Bezos. Voters are people just like consumers are people, and if you advertise and propagandize to them constantly, it will affect the way they think, even how they perceive themselves. And don't forget that this is especially true when you think the ad is a targeted one. And I don't know about you, but when I'm online, I assume that every ad I see is a targeted ad. And as the Harvard Business Study shows, just thinking that an ad is targeted for you will increase its effectiveness. So when the Washington Post claims that elected Republican leaders need to pander to Trump because 50% of conservative voters want them to, that's actually nonsense. People can change their minds. Many people who were planning to vote for Trump last year ended up voting for Biden, obviously. And more importantly, Republican officials are not devoid of methods that they can use to change voters' minds. They are plenty capable of running campaigns and ads that change the way people might otherwise vote. The Post failed to answer the question they posed in their own headline, and I think that's partially because they're asking the wrong question. We shouldn't wonder why Republican politicians are supporting fascism. The answer is obvious. The real question the Post should be asking is why do half of Republican voters want Trump back in the first place? And what can we be doing to change their minds? Hey y'all, if you liked this video, you should check out my new podcast. It is nigh on Spotify, Apple Music. It's a comedy, newsy sort of podcast, co-hosted by my friend Harrison Stewart, who's like a political, former political insider, and uh, now comic book writer. He's a really cool guy. And, uh, and I think it's a really fun show. And, you know, as a little button at the end of every episode of the podcast, we also kind of punish each other by, uh, by making the other watch content that we know is bad, and then we have to review it. So, I don't know. If you like some self-flagellation as well as some ranty comedy news, check it out. Spotify and Apple Music. All right.